Well, that we made it through another Viva Fresh. Although, you know, this time it feels a little different. I'm, you know, I'm scratching my head. I just can't put my finger on it. Can, what, can you think what it might be that's different this time? Well, look around. I'm, well, I mean, I'm looking want... around and I'm trying to figure out what the hell is going on. You I don't my know. glasses or no? I mean, we're <laughs> we're not in the lobby between like the toilet, the men's room. Remember, and we, the... we were so close to the well, toilet. I mean, I'm trying last... to keep it clean. You know, <laughs> women's room, men's room, ladies' room, men's room. Yeah, that's where we we're at last year. So. Um, no, we're smack dab in the middle of the expo floor. So, awesome. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. You know, and uh, Viva Fresh is, is, is uh, close to you and I. It's, it's in a special place in our heart. Sure. Being from the very front of this thing, um, they've been so good to us. The show, the Fresh Cred, it's, it's been a great partnership. And, and again, it's, it's been good to be part of it. Um, we're beyond thrilled to, to be here. Be able yep. to attend, be able to do this from the show floor and be part of it. So it's been great. Yeah. And and for those of you listening, you're going to hear from sponsors, guests, individuals today, um, which without we couldn't be here. Um, we definitely want to thank them. Uh, Colimex, B&M Avocados, IFCO, Full Tilt Marketing, Santis Produce, Sunfed, Splendid, and Produce Careers. Well, thank you, Viva Fresh. Thank you, all of our sponsors. And thank you, Ed. And thank you, Craig. And thank you, Ed, for being such a good friend. You're so thankful. And enjoy the show. All right. Well, we, you know, Ed doesn't like for me to be surprised that we're back. So, hey, we're back and nobody's excited or surprised. Right. Is that was that better? We're just going to have to Google some options. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how you, you know, we're back. How about just welcome How did Johnny back? Carson do it? How about welcoming people Carson? back? That's, the, that's, welcome who? that's also very, what's, what's, what's like very good? egocentric that it's we're back. Like, we, how about welcome back? Welcoming, them, well, welcoming people back. You know this show? Welcome back. To the place. Welcome back, Carter. That is what. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know. I just tapped the table. I just freaking violated rule number one. All right. <laughs> We're going to do a tap jar next time. We're going to have a jar, and every tap is going to be five bucks. Oof. It's going to get expensive right here in the middle, let me just tell you. Yeah. All right. I like, I like tapping. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, hey, we have with us uh, Bobby Grinstead comes to us from Fresh Edge. Um, Welcome. Not, welcome thank here. Thank you for being here. Yeah. No, thank you for having me. Appreciate and it. Welcome, uh, I, I guess, technically back to Texas for you. Yeah. I mean, uh, I know you don't reside here like myself any longer, but you were you born and raised here? Yeah, born and raised, uh, born in Houston, and then pretty young, moved up to Dallas. So glad to be back. I've lunch both days, gone out for barbecue. It's what I miss the most out of Texas, I think, or one of the most. So it's been good. Yeah. Nice to be back. Now, did you, so Colorado Springs, right? Yes. All right. So uh, Colorado Springs, did you, do you have a smoker there? Have you put in a, a smoker so oh, yeah. you can impress the neighbors? I have an offset smoker. I only get That's to it That's where you about, live now? Yes. Oh, my God. Have you ever been? I think I'm in love again. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully That's not. That's a good spot for me. I get tired about Colorado Springs when I go to northwestern Colorado on my annual hunting trip. Okay. So, if you have space for, I was going to say, Ed's a small now trailer, he, now just you're an overnight it. spot. I mean, I'm, I'll be out before you go to work. Yeah, yep. Hey, it's, it's we'll talk about incredible. it later. You don't have to say no now yeah. or yes now. We can totally talk about it later. It's a hard maybe. Yeah. <laughs> hard maybe. I love it. Yeah, I'd have stuck with just a hard no because he literally will take that maybe and run with it. No, you're just going to find me in your driveway. Won't you? yeah. <laughs> like, hey, I got to get out of here. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. But anyway, so you do have a smoker. Uh, but you haven't had a chance to use it much? No, I, you know, I go for like the, the 12 hour brisket and I, I have three little ones, so it's a little hard every once in a while to take a full day, um, crack a few maybe, but, uh, yeah, I love it. I love barbecue and I really miss Texas barbecue. Yeah, no, for that's sure. the only cooking I can do because it's hard to screw up. If you want it better, just leave it on longer. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's a hell of a concept. Don't tell everybody that. What? Because people think if you cook bris good brisket, you're like a master cook. Oh, I'm not. I know I'm not. Yeah. Well, I know I'm not either. Okay. But I can. Low and slow, brisket. though, that's kind of hard to mess up. It is kind of hard to mess it up. People do, though. Yeah. I've had some bad briskets. <laughs> have you really? I have. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. But it, but is that you got to learn that people don't realize how slow and low you need to be. I don't do the whole wrapping thing either. Like the, 
you know, after you cook it for so long and then wrap it and then throw it in an ice chest yeah, and no. sit around. I, I have a friend that's lent me a rig that will do six, 16 briskets. Jeez. Oh man. I mean, it's a big rig yeah, and that's yeah. just the, and that's just the tower. Like you still have like a hundred gallon tank, you know, grill and then the fire box. I mean, it's a rig. It's huge. Um, and he's lent me, to me for parties before and I've done as many as eight. But again, I just wow. put them on the very top and let them cook all day and put a bunch of brown sugar on them or pepper and mustard and whatever Callie gave me to do. Yeah. Right. So, and they came out awesome. Wow. Anyway. Well, I'm a cheater. I sidetracked you. <laughs> I'm a cheater. I bought a Traeger oh. and it's even oh, more my. simple. That's yeah. not, dude. It eats Half good. the fun is like soaking the wood and the fire and the smell. I, and you know, it wasn't for me. It wasn't, it wasn't for me. Uh, no, I didn't I, like the soak in the wood. I didn't like all that that came with that. There's a lot of work involved. It's a ton of work, and that's why it's like I like doing it. But like I said, I only think I did it like three times last year. So it's like I'm sure if I had a trader, just I'd be, be a cheater. A more, get though, get a trader, which I'm not sure is a good thing or not. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I just be a cheater and get a trader. That, yeah. That's my advice. There was a on guy on YouTube. I guess it's hard to sear meat on a trader because it only goes up so high. So he had like. I don't know. He went and deactivated something, took out some kind of restrictor that it had in it so that he could <laughs> sear the damn meat. I'm like, dude, you're working harder than you have to. I mean, honestly, recently um, I had a pan seared steak and it'll stink up your house. I mean, you find out how to do it outside. We have a burner on our pit. So yeah. actually a lot of the restaurants in a cast iron skillet, a steak, heck, that's like the way to go. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in your house, it can. But you got to get that dude hot. It's got to be Real. hot. It's got to be hot. Yeah. And that's hard to do. And. And I still struggle with, once it's on the plant, getting everything to come off with it with the steak. Have you got that figured out? Without leaving the steak behind? Without leaving, well, <laughs> you know, at least. Well, the, I mean, these guys the, on, the on Instagram are, like, constantly bathing it in butter. Now, we're getting way down a rabbit hole. Yeah, we really. are. <laughs> I don't even know that. Yeah, what, this was none of the questions we talked about. Was no, we, no. Your brisket wasn't even part of it. So, this is how the show works. We absolutely have no idea what direction we're going to go, what we're going to talk about. <laughs> no, I'm excited to see what trouble we'll get well, into. Well, that's then. exactly right. Yeah. And we could get in some for sure. <laughs> All right. But let's, uh, so Fresh Edge, food service, food service retail. What, what do you guys do there at Fresh Edge? Yeah, we do a little bit of everything. So a company's broken down about two-thirds of its food service, about a third of its uh, retail. Uh, we have four processing divisions and a USDA meal prep facility. So... Um, it's been really nice from my point of view, being able to reach out to growers and things like that and shippers and just uh, kind of offer a house for any products that they have, frankly. So it's been good. And how many locations do you guys have? Uh, I think we have nine distributors uh, within Network, uh, mostly concentrated in the Midwest uh, through Tennessee. Uh, we do have a facility in Florida and Alabama and an operation in Houston, but Mostly kind of in that Midwest corridor going gotcha. down. Gotcha. So, and you guys are in the news a lot, still uh, actively doing some acquisitions, I believe. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be a, a really interesting process. We um, swapped equity partners about six months ago. Swapped out what, I'm sorry? Equity partners. Equity partners, gotcha. Um, yeah. Our private equity backed. Uh, we swapped them out. We had outgrown our previous one. Um, so we kind of moved on and we found a new group that's really interested in uh, working and growing with us. So... Um, yeah, no, it's, it's been a lot and there'll be a, a ton of consolidation, I think in the next six months, year, not even just us, just industry wide distributors. It's going to be a pretty crazy time. I, you know, and, and of course, you know, Sunfed, we were, we were part of one of those acquisitions. We're part of the grub market family. Sure. Uh, and I believe exactly what you're talking about. I think for this business, that is a, that's a direction we're, we're, we're having to go right in order for businesses to be able to come together and start to, to make money and survive yeah. some of this stuff. I think consolidation, go ahead. No, and I think, uh, I, I really like, I, I think actually, as we kind of talk about it, some of our business model was similar to uh, Grubbs and you, where uh, we're putting a high premium on keeping the companies independent, keeping their personalities together, things like that with it, and just being able to offer them some new resources. So uh, probably somewhat similar. You know, Very all similar. the companies with under us uh, have kept their original names, uh, original management, all those type of things on it. We really don't want to mess with uh, what's made those companies and the, the special sauce that they all seem to have. But, man, there is a lot of money pouring into the food space, produce space, but ha the controlled environment, yep. ag stuff. Definitely. What do you think about that? Uh, from which, I mean, there's just a, a ton of money coming into yeah. it. Um, 
And, you know, it seemed like when uh, interest rates started going up, it, it slowed down for a little bit and then it's kind of picked right back up. So uh, a lot of people are interested. I think everybody kind of sees this as a uh, a good opportunity everybody eats. And so there's a, a lot of dynamics that maybe are able to get straightened out from our supply chains. But um, sometimes I think people are half crazy. On yeah, <laughs> yeah. you look at it. Yeah, we look at this stuff yeah. and it seems like, oh my gosh, you know. Uh, now, now, for you guys, do you do much with in that space? Uh, not so much on the, the growing side of it. We started reaching out, and especially with uh, you know how transition might look this year for certain items and things, we've started working with it. But... Uh, as far as I know, with Fresh Ed, we haven't really started investing in any type of like grow houses gotcha. or anything like that. Gotcha. Uh, we're trying to just kind of stay focused and be as good as we can kind of in our space and just uh, make sure that we're aligning with good partners on the sides of us so that we can all kind of rise together. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So what, you know, what, where are we at now that we're the other side, you know, you guys, I know, had a lot of restaurant business during the pandemic and we're heavily affected by you know that and the shutdown uh where are things today everything's been going really well um what's odd is uh more recently we've kind of found the retail side a little softer for us than the food service has been for this last few months on it um usually we kind of expect in january everybody's trying to eat clean new year's resolutions things like that with it and we usually kind of get ready for a a really clean healthy retail um and it didn't seem and it, it we've been kind of looking at this and everybody's been talking about the recession that's coming and how it's going to affect things and stuff like that but um all of our companies and food service are above pre-pandemic levels at this point so uh, you follow this more than i do i'm sure um pre pre-covid i remember seeing some statistics that Pre-COVID, the you know consumption was about 50-50 retail versus food service. Obviously, during COVID, food service went way down. I mean, when you say it came back, or you think just generically or generally, you think we're back to 50-50, or is it, you know, does the scale tip the other way? So right now, our our food service is kind of the strongest, and this fluctuates, and this is why. I mean, been, as like a total market, total been nationwide. Pretty good. I mean, people just, you know, inflation's happened. Stuff is more expensive to eat at restaurants, but yeah. our numbers are showing that it hasn't stopped people from going to a restaurant. Wow. Um, and it's something that we try and keep an eye on because whenever a recession's coming or we think it's about to come, we usually expect it to shift back into the retail side of it. So it might come, but so far it's been pretty, pretty steady on our side. Hmm. Yeah, that was a, that was a curious question for me, and I'm curious of that too. I, although, if I think about it, my own personal life, um, I've probably spent more in restaurants in the last 12, 15 years or 12, 15 months yeah. than I did the post. Uh, you know, and based on what I see at the restaurants, it looks like that uh, you know other people are spending the same way, right? So yeah. I don't know. I'm curious about that because I'm like you. It's, it's a fifty-fifty, you know. 50% of every dollar consumer food wise, you know, it's almost 51%. I think what food service was before the mm -hmm. pandemic, obviously it dropped dramatically during it, but I'd be curious to know. And it, yeah. And I, it, it's something that we're trying not to take it granted and really doing it because <laughs> when COVID hit, that was a pretty terrifying time for us. Uh, you know, just with the inventory, you know, what do you do with that? Luckily we had Indianapolis fruit that really helped us kind of pump through uh, the retail side of it and help, but the receivables were really scary there for a little while on just what a restaurant's going to do in 30 days when they have no customers type yeah. of thing. So um, it was pretty scary, but I think it actually made our company a little bit stronger on rethinking how we want to approach things. And even through COVID with like labor or something, you know, you only have X number of drivers. How are you going to do this? And how are you going to pick your it spots? Was, things like that. There was some crafty stuff going on. I mean, we had, there was a lot of distributors that were doing you know uh mixed boxes of fruit and veg or or mixed boxes of you know eggs and meat and um heb for example early on started um partnering with local restaurants mm -hmm. and they were were providing prepared meals you know with local from local restaurants i think alamo cafe was one of them um i hope i'm not wrong there but anyway I, so that was interesting right yeah so, but obviously not every restaurant has that type of either ability or connection or but that was kind of a, one of the one an example of some extraordinary activities that happened during COVID. Yeah, Craig, how's uh, the last uh, six months or everything been for you guys? You know, I, the this 
first quarter of last year, if you go back and look at last year, um, we were really just across the industry production struggled in, mm -hmm. in our space in that January, probably January, February, but first quarter of last year was, was difficult. Yeah. Really difficult, really from a production side and, and really prices didn't reflect, although they were better, they didn't reflect enough input costs was impacting everybody back then. We hadn't had a chance to adjust to the, the impact of the, the input costs. Fast forward to this year and it's dramatically different, but I think a lot of that is, you know, yeah, the input costs are still high. Yeah, everybody's still struggling with it, but it's one of those things where everybody's been able to adjust. Mm -hmm. Production numbers are up dramatically over where we were at last year, and markets have been reasonably good across all spaces. So, right. yeah, first quarter, you know, honestly, yeah, finishing out last year, fourth quarter, you said six months, you know, last quarter and first quarter this year, uh, it, it looks healthy, right? It looks good. It looks healthy. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. You know, it's one of those things where, in this business, you just enjoy it when it's, you know, when it's really good. You know, the other shoe's coming, right? And you're like, ah, enjoy it. Although, sure. you know, you ask about that. I, I, you know, when you look at our space and what, so all the rains they've had in California, and it's obvious what's happened to the berry guys and even the lettuce guys yep. right now. Um, but you start to look at the stuff like the bell peppers and Coachella. You start to look at, you know, those rains have delayed plantings in a, in a, in a big way, yep. right? Uh, and and it's a domino effect. Or a, it is, and, and, and it's delayed. The butterfly effect, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's a delayed, and and we're not even sure, you know, what what it looks like. But we we still think that there's some some going to be some challenges on uh, production as we get into the summertime. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and get and markets will probably reflect some of the the struggles. Well, I don't know. I don't see inflation abating too much inside the produce department. Um, you know, and worst part of it is, 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 you know, if you look at the numbers, what's getting reported right now, you know, the packages are going down. Mm -hmm. You know, you got consumers buy, buying less uh, product, which that's, that's what happens when prices go higher. Yep. You know, they switch out. So It's kind of like they're making clothes bigger. <laughs> Super packages go down. You said, never mind. I was talking to somebody the other day. You went somewhere else. You're, you're I totally delusional. went somewhere else yeah. but because, <laughs> honestly – Clothes are being made bigger. So, but we can talk about that another day. Funny. Yeah. My clothes aren't being made bigger. <laughs> no, in general, <laughs> I think as an industry, yeah. they're okay. making clothes bigger. So you think you're still the same size, but the reality is you're not. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So a 34 is not a 34 anymore. Interesting. I guarantee it because I well, purchased. I, I, how can that even be? That's math. 34 inches no, it's is not. 34 inches. It's the size. It's not the inches. Believe me, it's not. So have you pulled out like an old pair of pants and tried to... No, uh, so there's a, <laughs> a specific brand of hunting gear that I use, okay. and it runs small, or it runs true to size, and they tell you when you order it, measure yourself. And I measured myself, and it's true. My waist is two inches bigger than my pant size. Huh. Like, my pant size is 34, but my waist is 36. And it's true. They're, they're like I think clothes are being made bigger. It's kind of psychological. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like a psychological, you know marketing tactic or something like that interesting but, yeah yeah anyway that rabbit sounds, hole, yeah rabbit hole alert. rabbit hole but that you know what i wasn't sure where you were going with that whole thing i mean i'm not sure how we got there but <laughs> me neither meanwhile <laughs> back just, at sometimes the ranch. things just triggered <laughs> sorry so uh but it, labor transport i want to talk about that because no, yeah, we haven't talked about that, that at I'm, all today well no i mean labor continues to be we've as a company you know my day job with ifco we've invested millions of dollars in automation because labor particularly in those markets where we operate where we have you know highly competitive uh labor pools um it's, it's very difficult and that's we continue to struggle with labor and invest a ton of money in automation so um it's i wouldn't say it's slow going i mean we're we're on pace right to convert the facilities but that and transport i think the last numbers i saw was like the load to truck ratio is like 1.85 to 1 mm. i mean that scares me more than anything that like, I grew up in the trucking business. I drove a semi at 12 years old. I uh, was on the road cross-country at 18. Wild. Um, and that and doesn't happen He anymore. drove a truck when he was 12 years old, and they're worried about automated trucks <laughs> driving down the road. I, I mean, <laughs> out in a field, dude. My dad would just turn me loose with one, you know. But not on There's the nobody going to arrest not you at this point, road. bro. <laughs> okay, no, it's fine. Uh, but seriously, like, there's just not that many opportunities to do that kind of stuff anymore. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm super concerned about you know, what transportation looks like in the future. Um, with Through the scholarship fund, Viva Scholarship Fund, 
you know, um, we are offered scholarships to not only students at four universities, but also, you know, trade schools, as long as it's related to, you know, the, the food, fresh food industry, produce industry. Um, and, you know, we need to do better about promoting that and seeing if we can get some folks um, interested. But uh, it's a real concern. Uh, the transport part is, I think that's a harder thing to spool up than anything because it's a skill. It takes experience. There's liability involved. You know, I mean, I remember even back then, I mean, just to get insured, like to be covered on insurance, you'd have to be like 25 years old. Mm -hmm. Right. So by then, you know, who knows if somebody's interested in, in, in doing that kind of work or that being in that line of work. So it's it's going to be tough. Uh, I don't know if we'll ever catch up. You can have all the trucks in the world. It's the drivers you don't have. Yeah. Right. No, and it's, uh, you know, kind of one of the interesting things about the process of uh, figuring out and learning who Fresh Edge is and kind of going to be one day is uh, how different all of our markets are where, uh, you know, we found a lot more success hiring drivers in Houston than we did in Pittsburgh. Um, and it kind of goes through all the other things. Uh, you know, one of our companies, uh, McCartney's in Paris, Tennessee, which has a population of like 9,000 people or something in it. Uh, so they have to hire a percentage of the city to fill and run all the, uh, the you know, roles in their operation and things like that with it. So we've really seen kind of a huge spectrum, you know, all the way through like the Chicago market and it just being a totally, totally different beast with different challenges. But uh, driving is going to be hard. I, we see, you know, one of the challenges we see for us is kind of across the board. So in procurement, I'm thinking a little bit more of a, like buyers or something like mm -hmm. that. And that's even been a really hard thing to find these days are really solid buyers who kind of understand the science and the art behind the business. Um, and so it's like we have an ideal version of how we want our kind of our structure of our companies to look at and um, kind of work within. But, you know, at times the challenge will be developing people fast enough or else we'll have to kind of make different decision points based off of who's available. So, yeah, I think it's trucking. I think it's internal. What do you think about AI, though? Is that you think that's really I mean, maybe. Don't speculate your lifetime, but maybe in Craig's lifetime, will we see AI like semis? I don't think we've seen them yet. Right? I don't know. Or maybe well, so in California. I did hear Tesla just like actually started rolling yeah. out their yeah. uh, electric cars. But I mean, Tesla's even put their hand up saying we weren't as quick or as quick as we thought I think we'd there be. There has this. to be a remote pilot. Um, a remote, and I say pilot because I saw recently, I think there has to be a remote pilot component. I saw the other day on Instagram where there was a, um, a mining operator. He was running like the, like whoever the, the pilots that run drones like for the military. So he was in a cockpit somewhere, obviously in a building, and he was running a front end loader at a mine mm -hmm. using the same kind of setup. So, mm -hmm. I mean, there's that. I think the human fail safe is still going to need to be some sort of I transition. I completely disagree. It's no, no. There, it, it's, it's, <laughs> it, it is coming. And it's going to come and be here faster than everybody thinks. I, I, it just is. I've been saying for years, I'm going to well, keep you know saying what, you it. You know what they say. If you keep saying it, it, com it eventually it comes true, true, and then you look like a genius. Well, I, so I, I want a time. I'll give me a deadline. <laughs> well, I, 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 I've been making the statement for many years. My, my, I got two, two granddaughters, um, eight and five, I believe. Uh, and then I got one that's one. So uh, the three granddaughters, you're right. But, but I was making the comment about the other two when they were younger. I was like, they will, I don't think, ever learn to drive. I had the same comment. So I have a, a son who's five years old right now. Um, and I was talking to somebody about, oh, like, how was it, you know, your kid starting to drive and going through that process and get the license? And they're like, he's not going to need to know how to drive. Yeah. Like by the time he's 16, you're just going to jump in a car and it's going to move you around. I, I don't saw, know if we're going to be there, but... Uh, I saw a post of a stick shift transmission and said millennial anti-theft device or something. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's good. I like that. That's marketable right yeah, there. It was awesome, man. Well, I mean, so, so I mean, and you got to think too, right? I mean, um, with, so one of the things that Tesla's talked about doing uh, is, is creating, which I think is what, I, if I were a car company, God, this, I'd already be down this path, but they're talking about building, you know, uh, robo, uh, robo cabs. Robo taxis, right? That just roll around with no driver, because the kids today, you know, they're they're a shared economy. Mm -hmm. You know, we we've got Uber now, right? People sharing other people's cars. I mean, it's a natural progression. Think about what it costs to own a car. Yeah. Right. From it's insurance. Ridiculous. From insurance to yeah. having a place to park it. 
to uh, you know that just goes on and and why why would somebody waste that kind of money for potentially you know the drive time if you do the math you could probably take a lot of uh, mobile taxis if there's nobody driving yeah. it right around so that's where i think the world's going to go is to something like that well and i think like another version of that i've heard through tesla is that you know you have your tesla car you drive it to work you park at work and then it takes off after you're at work and it's running around picking people up and so all of a sudden it kind of changes the dynamic from a car being a depreciating asset to a revenue generating asset so it's like i think that's kind of an interesting angle i'd sign it. up for that in a heartbeat yeah right keep your hands off of my sign up assets. <laughs> yeah no one's yeah. driving my uh, truck <laughs> <damn it. laughs> yeah. And when we talk about AI, I think, um, you know, since I've been around and especially, you know, we have like such amazing uh, leadership at Fresh Edge that have really been around the business for a long time. Uh, and, you know, we kind of talk about what's the blend today between the science and the art and what do we want to push for it. Um, and, you know, we've kind of said it where it's, you know, maybe 80, 85 percent science today. And the, the last piece of it is the art. And it seems like maybe that pendulum has swung over the last 20 years, kind of more science based. So. I wouldn't be surprised maybe if there's a little bit farther for that to go, but I, I think I agree that there's a human element to this, and especially in produce where no matter if you're tracking weather patterns, you can track a million different things, and it might be a revolution somewhere you know, in South America that actually affects it back up. And so it's just so much information that I think it, having people in that process to be able to either throw gas or pump the brakes on something is going to be really important. Yeah, I mean, I think retailers, even with e-commerce and, and how far it's come, sure. I will say, I mean, there's a, it's a good example of how, you know, even with the human factor involved, there's, you know, there's differences in in uh, preferences and ripe, sorry, not the swear $5, jar, but the I'd bump five, jar. Five, bump jar, $5 uh, to you, buddy. But even with the human factor involved, it's hard to get consistency, right? From I'm talking about order selecting process. Mm -hmm. um, so it's... Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't agree to, with Craig on the AI thing, but hopefully I'm wrong. Right. Well, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, but I well, know we're it's not going to bridge that stream. gap of the almost two to one load to truck ratio. I mean, how are we going to yeah. do that? Yeah. But you, the whole concept behind the guys driving it from a from a remote location makes a ton of sense to me. Mm -hmm. You know, and people and video games and the ability to control. Man, the, the, the technology there that now you're still not depending on a machine. You've got a human being that's got some control, and you could actually have it complemented by an actual computer on board that does the most of it. But you just got somebody there that's like an air traffic controller, right? Yeah. Fine tuning it, checking in. If they get in a the spot, something goes on. It's, it's doable. There's a lot of smart people out there. They're going to figure this out. Yeah. And, you know, I, I don't know if it's so much it. a. Go ahead. No, go ahead. you go ahead. I was just going to say, I'm not, I'm, I, I still go back to liability. I mean, there mm -hmm. are actuaries that are out there, I'm sure, working on this right now. Um, that's like the first fatality. Like, it's, uh, it's going to be, I mean. Oh, Tesla's already killed several people. So. <laughs> <laughs> and they're still building spaceships. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. Uh, you know, I think the safety will be the crux of it. And I know we're kind of going off, but I, I think the safety, to your point, will stall the process for a little bit. But at the first moment when they're able to prove this is actually a safer way to drive than people driving mm -hmm. cars, I think it'll flip possibly the other way pretty quick. Okay, that's a good point. But and then but but yeah, I keep going back to but if you're your five year old or my granddaughters and you've never known a life, if you've no, you know, in other words, when it's not new to you, when it's what world you know, you spent your time looking at a screen, yeah. you spent your time with automation, mm -hmm. with AI, and you get to that point, it's not going to be Normal. something that they're afraid of, right? No. They're not going to be. The people that are going to be afraid are people in our generation that have some sort of a reflection point or, or a, a place back in time that we can reflect back on. So, um, so. I don't know. I could be wrong, but I mean, I just see all Likely. the signs. I see all the signs pointing to it, uh, and kind of what you guys what started the conversation off was, you know, there's just not going to be the labor there to support what mm -hmm. needs to be done. I mean, there's no doubt there are fewer Uber and Lyft drivers today than before the pandemic, mm -hmm. right? There just is. Yeah, the labor market is absolutely crazy tight. Mm -hmm. for service industry, for drivers, for things like that. So I just think there's just not enough humans to do, and they're going to have to have another solution, whether you, you believe in it or not. So mm. anyway, wow. 
All right, so I don't know. I can't tell. We're just going to have to do a part two. Hey, we can't this do is, a part We need to get way further down the road. And there's so much hand waving going on behind the production crew. I can't tell if we're supposed to be wrapping up. If no, I've we're got we're supposed to be wrapping up. I yeah. got my hair is messed up. I don't know exactly what's going yeah. on here. So We're supposed to be wrapping up, but maybe Bobby will join us on a later date. I think that's possible, Bobby. No, yeah, you I appreciate back, you, you know. guys having me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now, we'll... Uh, from the comfort of your home hey. in Colorado Springs, no. down with a spacious driveway. Okay. Not, not during the week on your hunting trip. So that's what Ed's going to be doing in the front yard of your home in Colorado Springs the week of Ed's hunting trip. So, so. It'd be like uh, Christmas vacation when the brother in law shows up. Yeah. Randy <laughs> <laughs> with the Winnebago, uh, uh, yeah, bump out your Winnebago when you pull up. Oh God, right, let's get a pick. It's here. Oh, anyway. All right, so I guess we're gonna wrap up here. All so, right, thanks for joining. I'm glad us. we solved all the yeah, problems. We, we solved we so many today. problems yeah. here, and uh, <laughs> and uh, we'll uh, take this out of here. And like I said, we'll see you next time on part two, Bobby. Thank uh, you, bunch, thanks, buddy. Thanks, Bobby. Good luck, guys. Yeah, we'll see you. Man.